Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams. Daniel, good to see you. How are you, Dr. Paul? Very good. Very I'm good. glad you got over your little spell, and <laughs> uh, you're doing well. So uh, <clears throat> good you. to have you back here today. But uh, I want to talk about Cuba and what's going on there. We're expelling Cuban diplomats, and it looks like they're stirring up trouble. It looks like they're trying to undo uh, some of the things we thought were worthwhile that Obama did. It was opening up uh, diplomatic relations and embassies with Cuba, and I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But you've actually had some uh, on-site uh, experience. Uh, while we were in Washington, you actually made a trip to Cuba. Uh, Unfortunately, even then, you weren't li leaving a free country because you couldn't even just fly from here and go to Cuba. You had to go to Mexico in order to make it all legal and above board and go to Cuba. But that was back in 03, and you did get to meet with uh, Cuban diplomats. Uh, so uh, that must have been a worthwhile experience. Yeah, what's interesting was when I came to work for you in 2001, that was the one thing that I really inherited from my predecessor was your long-term project to help improve relations with Cuba. And we had really a left-right coalition in the House who were dedicated, the Cuba Working Group, I think it was called, who were dedicated to improving and actually to moving toward where we finally got in 15 uh, with President Obama, where we're restoring diplomatic ties and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, in, in Washington, uh, I claim that on the big issues, the parties come together, you know, war and Federal Reserve and debt. But other times, they argue and, and, and bicker over it. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, something like this, uh, there was a coalition, and uh, it's uh, uh, difficult uh, for me to understand why, if a president like Obama, which he wasn't our favorite president, that if he does something, that he fits what we've been talking about and which other Republicans agree with, why the party has to get their back up against the wall and absolutely disagree with them. And that seems to be what happens. So, uh, so we did, we have talked about this a long time, but now it's, now it seems to be re uh, a reversal of what Obama tried to do. The embassies were open, the travel was open, uh, people were allowed to fly with them in this country. Now some of this is being reversed. The, uh, the travel restrictions are entered into. Uh, embassies are being grossly reduced, but it came out of this, uh, uh, this incident where uh, 20, 21 of uh, Americans, or even though there was a Canadian, got sick all of a sudden. It was sort of a mysterious disease, and nobody fully explained it, and even today they don't know it. So there was talk. Uh, were they poisoned? Uh, you know, sonic waves sent in there to do things? Or could it have been a virus? And I think all that is up for grabs. One thing, though, that I'm, I feel certain of is the people who did not like, you know, better relationships with China have used this. You know, they, you know, they won't let a crisis go to waste, and all of a sudden things have gotten reversed. And uh, we have a president that uh, really has never been in our camp. I don't know whether he said any good things about relationships with Cuba even in the campaign, but he has not indicated, you know, that he's on our side of saying, let's talk to people. You know, the Cold War's over. Uh, that, that's, uh, uh, you know, that's old fashioned now. But uh, here, here we are going back and forth trying to sort this out. And unfortunately, it's going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Uh Candidate Trump sided, you know, very strongly with the neocons when it came to Cuba. He called the deal one-sided. He criticized it. Uh, that helped him with, you know, some of the Florida delegation, the Rubios and Ross Laytons of the world. Uh, but he's always been very hawkish on it. But, you know, the supposed attacks, very mysterious. Nobody knows what they are. Nobody has any idea. Um, the symptoms of the attacks are, are wide-ranging from nosebleeds, nausea, dizziness, to severe headaches, mild brain damage, hearing and memory loss, supposedly. Um, and so it's, uh, the question is, was it some sort of acoustic weapon? They've, uh, they've described hearing things uh, from glind grinding, blaring cacophony to the sound of crickets, which is a pretty broad mm -hmm. range of things. Uh, so no one knows what happened, if it was, as you say, a virus, an attack, or something else. 
but as you point out, it was a good crisis, <laughs> so therefore you've got to reach the conclusion before the evidence. Yeah, and right now, even our own government is not accusing the Cuban government of doing this, and that might be diplomatic about, about doing that, but uh, the Cuban government, I think, wants to resolve this. I think they like our visitors going to Cuba. I think they're less communistic uh, than they used to be. So they're, uh, they've actually even allowed our FBI to come in and investigate to try to figure out what's going on. They want to know what's what's going on. Uh, but it, um, it, is, it is very, very strange whether there's, uh, you know, some illicit uh, sonic activity going on. Uh, some of those symptoms can be explained by a virus. Not everybody was working in the embassy. Some were just in a, uh, you know, were, were spouses and they lived in a hotel nearby and, and they ended up having a problem. It doesn't look like it's continuing. Uh, it, it raised, to me, one of the things that crossed my mind, <clears throat> could this be something similar to Legionnaire's disease? Mm. Remember, they had symptoms that were sort of mysterious. They finally isolated, you know, a virus on that. Uh, but right now, I don't think they're going to isolate a virus. But I do know that people can get a virus and have dizziness and they can have uh, some of these symptoms and they can have loss of hearing and it can be permanent even by a virus. And when it's narrowed down to that, uh, that those, those symptoms, uh, immediate treatment is very important. But there's a few other things that went along there that doesn't, isn't fully explained. But uh, right now there's no question about how it's hurting uh, the diplomatic relationship, uh, you know, first we brought some diplomats home and uh, then we kicked out a few uh, Cuban diplomats and, uh, and, and now uh, the most recent thing, they, we expelled 15 uh, diplomats and they're continuing to go and the travel restrictions because they, it was announced that there's a travel warning all of a sudden I guess when you take people into the country against a travel warning your insurance protecting those individuals uh, no longer exists. Mm. And the other thing which I believe this is the case there are some people who make the case that if you want to talk about relative danger that right now if you and I decided to get on a commercial airline and fly to Cuba or any other country in the region it's probably one of the safest places to mm -hmm. go to so uh, it's uh, it, it's it's not good that things have been reversed and I just don't see exactly what's going to happen from this uh, because uh, they certainly aren't uh, paying a lot of attention to our viewpoint <laughs> The other, the other question to wonder, I mean, we, we don't know, there can be a lot of speculation done, you speculate about a virus. That might be bolstered by the idea that it, apparently it's unclear whether all these symptoms that people are reporting are related to the so-called attacks. Could be a case of kind of mass hysteria. And if you think about how an embassy operates, and I've had a lot of experience with diplomats over my years, if you think of how an embassy operates in a place like Cuba, you do have a very closed system. Uh, uh, diplomats don't get around very much. They don't mingle in with the local community. They tend to build a real wall around themselves. Uh, so you get a lot of group thinking. So if you have a couple of people get sick uh, and it's mysterious, you can, and it's understandable, you can set off kind oh. of a psychological, so everything would be attributed to that. There's one possibility. Yeah. But let's say the consensus uh, gets around this idea that sonic waves did this. It's scary, yeah. Um, who would, who would do this? Who has the most interest in doing it? Do you think the Cuban government right now uh, wants to break total relations with, uh, with the United States? Right now, I think they're enjoying our tourists. They're the making money, trip. yeah. So I cannot believe that they would do that. And um, I sort of don't think our government would do it, even though... Um, They've done some pretty wild and nasty That's, things. Especially with Cuba, yeah. <laughs> or, or, you know, the, um, the, the part of the government that is part of the deep state, you know, some of our secret agencies and spy agencies, they do a lot of things our, our actual government doesn't even realize that's going on. But uh, who, who would benefit the most? And it's, it's really the element that uh, never wanted to have better relations with yeah. them. And... Uh, of course, the, the first senator to, to uh, say this is the reason we really have to crack down was Rubio. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he, I mean, I don't, I don't hear of anybody else thinking that they know all the answers. Uh, at least he was the most outspoken. And since he represents their, their view, 
one way or another, he, he's delighted. But what if uh, there's somebody else that we don't know about right now who does it deliberately? They could, they could do this, and they're unrelated to our government, unrelated to uh, the Cuban government, but related to a group that, uh, uh, you know, for some philosophic reason, uh, want to end this. And uh, it may be very difficult ever to discover exactly who did it, even if we did know it was a yeah. sonic wave. And the other issue, it's been reported that the first people to come down with these illnesses are U.S. intelligence operatives working in Cuba. So that raises another issue that we might wonder. Are they involved in uh, covert actions against the Cuban government? Was it some sort of a retaliation against them? Could it have been a third party? They were, maybe they identified the intelligence operatives that were in Cuba and they launched something, a third party, hardliners on either side. You know, there are so many factors that can be considered when you look at just what we do know. Uh, and then the qu big question, I guess the question for the whole show was, why would you jump to conclusions and start expelling diplomats when we really, you know, it's, the picture's pretty unclear. Yeah, if, if it's a health matter, uh, that's not the usual thing, unless it was quickly identified as some rapidly spreading disease. But there's no, no... Uh, charges made that this is a contagious disease. I mean, it happened, it stopped, that suggests, uh, you know, something, hysterical reactions or some type of a, a sonic wave or some type of an immediate virus that is not going to spread. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate because this is not, not going to be easy to reverse. You know, it takes a long time to recover from 50 years of sanctions. Yeah. And then we have the recovery, but then when the setback occurs, it cancels out. This might uh, cancel out 50% uh, of what Obama was trying to do because the atmosphere right now is not, is not good, even though all the sanctions have not been removed. Uh, it's, and it, it uh, you know, actually helps, uh, you know, our economic competitors because they were way ahead of us yeah. anyway. <laughs> you know, they were already in Cuba. But I, I, st I really believe that Cuban people, and you met some, the Cuban people would like to see us there, and I believe this government would like to see us there. Uh, so it's, uh, it's unfortunate on what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. And if I, uh, if I can have a concluding idea, uh, you know, well, the State Department issued a statement yesterday as to why they're expelling these diplomats. And we, we like to talk a lot about hypocrisy and irony on the show when it comes to U.S. foreign policy. And the reason why it was cutting embassy staff there was the failure to take appropriate steps to protect U.S. diplomats uh, with regard to their Vienna Treaty obligations. The Cubans have an obligation under the Vienna Treaty uh, to do certain things. Uh, all countries do their signatories, and that's one of them is that uh, the property of that country in the other country is, 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 is their property, is sacrosanct. It's pretty ironic because just this week, the U.S. Uh, security moved into uh, Russian uh, diplomatic space in San Francisco against the will of the Russians. Total violation of the Vienna Treaty. Uh, we did it totally blatantly, but that's okay. Not our government. I'm afraid it was. <laughs> you know, sometimes we hesitate to use the word our and we yeah, that's uh, true. because it shouldn't be so broad. But uh, I guess we will not have the final answer here, but the biggest thing is, is that uh, the diplomatic relationship with Cuba has taken a setback, and we need more people looking at this more objectively, realizing that good relations with Cuba is possible. There's been an improvement. It's a shame that uh, in, in spite of the fact that it's difficult to say positive things about Obama, if he does something positive, whether it's in Cuba or with uh, Iran, we ought to recognize it. We ought to deal with the issues and move in that direction. And one is more open travel, more open communication, more trade. That is one of the most important things that we can do to move in the direction of peace and prosperity. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.